Well, joining me now in studio is uh, Roads, Transport and Public Works Cabinet Secretary Kiptumba Murkomen and Dr. Isaac Kalua Green, founder of Green Africa Foundation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Waziri, let me begin with you. You've been there the last three days, as have you, Dr. Terry. Um, inaugural Africa Climate Summit. What are your reflections having been there the last three days? Uh, first of all, as a student of environmental law, it is very defining moment. Mm. Uh, if you think about Rio 1992 and the opportunity that we've seized uh, 30 years uh, later, uh, that it took the leadership of President William Ruto and our country to bring this conversation home. Um, like the president said, and it's been said by many of the speakers, those of us who are the least em emitters of uh, 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 CO2, of carbon dioxide, and, uh, and uh, uh, green gases emissions, we are actually the uh, most affected as a region and as a continent. But what I like about this conversation, um, and uh, if I just speak from uh, what the civil society was saying there, yeah. for far too long, we become a continent that is lamenting. Uh, we are, we, we've been writing many, many chapters on books of lamentations. Uh, this conversation that has happened in our country, first of all, being the first of its own guy, kind is an achievement. Number two is that it's not structured in terms of uh, lamentations. It's actually about op uh, uh, solutions to the issues that we are going through. The third thing about this conference is the fact that it does not focus on di the historical divides. Mm -hmm. uh, like the president framed it, it's not about us versus them, it's not about the north versus south, emitters versus those who don't emit. It's about, uh, it doesn't matter who does it, uh, ultimately the uh, the rest of the world is going to suffer. And if, they, if the world suffers, all of us will suffer. The last thing is that even in that structure of conversation that uh, we, we are having on this, on this very important issue is that we are not structuring ourselves as receive, receivers of gifts uh, or basically waiting to be rescued from the furnace. Instead, it's been fashioned that we want to sell the opportunities that we have. Mm -hmm. We are saying we are the solution to the problems of uh, uh, emission of green ga gases mm -hmm. uh, that has affected the world. We are not giving this solution to benefit Africa alone, mm -hmm. but we are going to be the solution of the entire world. And we have been able to really locate and document the benefits that comes with investing in Africa. You know, talking about the potential that we have, uh, the resources that we have, exploitation of those resources, not to benefit us as Africa alone, but us being the solution to the, what's affecting the world. And therefore, structure ourselves in a manner that we can be able to receive investment instead of receiving aid. So it's not about aid, it's not about donations, yeah. it's about what is the potential that we have for investment that we can receive that investment. And last thing I'd like to say, um, and, and uh, just taking advantage of the conversation that the civil society had, is that we are not telling the world that give us a gift we are telling them that we have a resource that needs to be developed and an investment of that resource. Even though the, the, you know, the, uh, uh, there is a conversation about reparation, about uh, uh, um, uh, salvaging the world that has been affected, the drought that we go through, but the, the, the fashion which the line that we took is, here we are, yeah. we are ready for investment. We want you to invest in, and when you invest in Africa, because you have the capital, you've polluted the world, you now have the money, we can no longer do the same thing again and again. Come ye and invest in Africa, yeah. and, and, and let us solve the problems, not of Africa alone, but the problems of the world. And that is really what's very uh, uh, profound about this conference. And speaking about doing things, the same things again and again, Dr. Kalua, let me bring you in there. Because a lot of times, and what people have feared, this particular summit would be is a talk shop. A lot of the narratives, though, Waziri has talked about changing it. We're not begging. We're coming to the table with solutions. Are we running into that same trap with this summit? Um, I don't want us to treat this discussion so serious. Life is not uh, very 
<laughs> there are three things that I don't even know before I respond to your question, how you managed to get me and Mwashimira here. <laughs> because there are three things in common that I don't know how you matched. One, he is a son of a pastor, and I am a son of a pastor. Right. So anything we say here is that is right and must be right, is it must be so because we were taught to do the right, right. thing. Secondly, <laughs> he's married in my neighborhood and I'm married in his neighborhood. Oh, what are the odds? <laughs> and then, the, <laughs> and then the third thing, I like his passion to doing work. But, uh, uh, and I want to thank you, Waziri. Oh, we have something in common. I'm a child of a pastor yes, as well. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. look at that. Yeah. So I just don't know how you managed to do this. So we just have to do what is right tonight and for God's glory. So uh, three things have happened, and uh, I believe they are most profound. Mm. Profound because it is unmatched. This country, this continent, our leaders in Africa, have never spoken in one voice. This is the first time that we are attacking one direction, yeah. saying that Africa has had enough and the secret is our unity. So that's one that uh, makes me believe that it's not just a talk shop. Mm. Uh, and that attack and voice direction is going to make a very big change. Secondly, Africa is talking about issues that have never been talked about, the debt that the money that we've been paying in terms of debt uh, gets to about 60%, and this is only the, the, the interest mm. on the debt. Can you guys restructure? And uh, that's the first time, unprecedented. There are countries that have fallen off the cliff, others are at the edge, and Kenya is almost in that kind of a position. So speaking in one language, speaking in unity to attack that is the second most important thing. The third thing is the fact that Africa has come together. Mm. We, have, we have grown of age before it was Serikali's idea. And uh, Serikali in this case was the entire continent of Africa. Going out there, Serikali's idea. Can you imagine how old it has been? Then we advanced to the next, the next, next stage, which was now the stage of uh, guys, now you know we are suffering, uh, please. Uh, we need to do something. We advanced to that. We started talking about the language of, hey, guys, you are messing up the environment. You've got to pay us. Yeah. Uh, and now we are back to say, guys, let's sit in one table. We've got something to offer. We have a solution. You are messing it up there. And uh, John Kerry, I give him uh, my salutation. He said 20 countries are messing up, and we know that your Africa continent is suffering. But we're saying, OK, that's fine, but here we are. In what you're offering, we got something on the mm. table. Let's talk. Africa has got the space for the carbon sinks. Africa has got the youthfulness that is there. Africa has got the potential for industry and, and manufacturing space. Africa has got what you guys don't have there. Right. And I think now it's business. We are, we are discussing because there is no black or white. To show me where I'm black, show me where you are white. And it's a situation that is real because we are now talking about what the people of Kenya, yeah. what the people of Africa qualify to have. So we are at a tuko hapo sasa, tuko WhatsApp moja. And I guess the thing that will show us that we are truly at par is if they actually put their money where their mouth and is. That $100 billion that they had